the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Friends, uh, with joy we gather together for this celebration of the Holy Mass on the Feast of Pentecost. Thank you for tuning in and participating prayerfully to this Mass being broadcast from the Cathedral of St. Peter in Chains in Peterborough. On Pentecost Day, the Holy Spirit descended upon the Apostles as in tongues of fire, giving them the power and the eloquence to proclaim the Gospel. May that same Spirit gather us together in prayer and praise as we celebrate these sacred mysteries and as we call to mind our sins. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. The word of the Lord. Please join in singing our responsorial psalm. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul, Lord God, how great you are. Clothed in majesty and glory, wrapped in light as in a robe. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. Bless the Lord, my soul. Send forth your spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. All of these look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it, they gather it up. You open your hand, they have their fill. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, and renew the face of the earth. You take back your spirit, they die returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit, O oh Lord, and renew the face of the
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Holy Spirit, Lord divine, come from heights of heaven and shine. Come with blessed radiance bright. Come, O oh Father of the poor, come whose treasured gifts endure. Come our heart's unfailing light. Of consolers wisest best and our soul's most welcome guest. Sweet refreshment, sweet repose. In our labor rest most sweet, pleasant coolness in the heat, consolation in our woes. Light most blessed shine with grace in our heart's most secret place. Fill your faithful through and through. Left without your presence here, life itself would disappear. Nothing thrives apart from you. Cleanse our soiled hearts of sin, arid souls refresh within. Wounded lives to health restore. Bend the stubborn hearts and will, melt your frozen, warm the chill. Guide the wayward home once more. On the faithful who are true and profess their faith in you, in your sevenfold gifts descend. Give us virtue's sure reward. Give us your salvation, Lord. Give us joys that never end.
The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead and the first day of the week and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples re rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I sent you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Friends, the, uh, the Feast of Pentecost celebrates the giving of the Holy Spirit to the Church, and in the Church's calendar, it ranks third in importance after Easter and Christmas, because uh, the bestowal of the Holy Spirit in many ways, uh, we say, was the, the birthday of the Church, the day that those first disciples started doing what the Church should do, carrying out the mission of proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. And yet very often, I suspect, we, we struggle to get a handle on this feast because we don't always have a, a ready image of the Holy Spirit at hand. Now, someone has said uh, that we know what a father and a son are. We have experience of this in our, in our daily lives. And so we can identify with God as father and God as son. And yet we don't instantly or instinctively grasp what spirit is. And so... You know, we struggle to conceptualize the third person of the Blessed Trinity. And, you know, as often as we invoke his name, uh, whenever we, we make the sign of the cross, uh, it remains true that we don't easily identify with the Holy Spirit, which probably explains why people pray more naturally or instinctively to God as Father or to Jesus as Son than they do to the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is perhaps better understood by his actions or effects. And that's why we will so often speak about uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, those interior graces that renew and transform us, or the fruits of the Holy Spirit, those, those living signs, uh, those effects like joy, peace, and self-control that are signs that we're living a life in harmony with the Spirit. Boy, we all had to memorize the uh, gifts of the Spirit and the fruits for confirmation, but I suggest uh, a lot of people would have trouble rattling them off today, but whether we could pass a test or not, uh, we should never forget that we received the Holy Spirit in baptism and that His grace was increased and renewed in us in confirmation. And so His effects are meant to be in our own lives and hearts. Uh, if we look at these scriptures today, uh, whether Luke's account of Pentecost or John's narrative of Jesus bestowing the Holy Spirit on Easter night, we can see some immediate effects. The apostles were given a mission, and they were given the power and the strength to fulfill that mission. In the Acts of the Apostles, we saw that they got immediately to work, uh, going out into the streets and proclaiming the gospel with the gift of many languages, which really was a sign and a foreshadowing that the good news would be proclaimed to all the world, just as Jesus had instructed them to do. In John's Gospel, Jesus tells the apostles, as the Father has sent me, so I send you, and he breathes on them the Holy Spirit. From that day forward, the mission of Christ and the Holy Spirit become the mission of the Church. Now, there's a line in the Catechism of the Catholic Church that I like that really uh, sums it up. It says that the Spirit builds, animates, 
and sanctifies the church. That really is a tremendous summary of what the Holy Spirit does, what the Holy Spirit's work is in the life of the church. The Holy Spirit builds, animates, and sanctifies. Now, I mentioned in a recent uh, homily that the Acts of the Apostles really is an account of how the Holy Spirit builds up the early church, leads it and guides it and sustains it, and the Holy Spirit still does so in our time. My last uh, working assignment as a priest was to found a new parish in the town of Milton, Ontario, the, the new St. Benedict's Parish. I was at that work less than a year when I was appointed uh, bishop. But that first year, I mean, it really was uh, a pioneering time. Uh, like most uh, new parishes, we started out our life uh, in the gym of a Catholic uh, school. And my mantra during that first year was, we don't have a church building, but we will be building the church. Capital C, church. The church is the people of God. The church as the parish community. I must have said it a hundred or more times. And I didn't know that first Sunday of our opening whether we'd have 50 people there, a hundred, or 500. But I was heartened that when the weekend rolled around, there was at least close to 500. But I was especially encouraged you know, at the number of people who came forward to ask, how can I help? Or better yet, to volunteer, this is how I can help. This is what I can do for this new parish community. See, the Holy Spirit was building us up as a, a church, even though we didn't have a building and wouldn't have for a long time. Well, I'm happy to report the construction of that new church is nearing completion, and it will be finished this year. But that experience of that pioneering year one, for me, really was a reminiscent of this line from Paul to the Corinthians we saw in the second reading. To each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit, not for themselves, but for the common good, for the building up of the body of Christ. And the Holy Spirit animates the church. Now, to animate is to, is to give life, it's to energize, it's to inspire. And the Holy Spirit does that by always leading us to Jesus. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit always leads us to Jesus, reminds us of all that Jesus taught, gives us the ability to pray, and the Spirit helps us to conform our lives more closely to the Lord Jesus and gives us the courage and the strength as well uh, to witness. There's an old story told about a, a stained glass maker and his young apprentice. And the apprentice came to him one day and complained, uh, I'm not doing very well with my tools. Let me borrow yours. So he went away, but he came back about a week later and had to admit, uh, I'm not doing any better with your tools than I did with mine. And the stained glass maker said to the young man, so now you see, it's not the tools of the master that you need, but the spirit of the master that you need. See, the Holy Spirit animates and invigorates the church because he continually makes present the spirit of the master, who is the Lord Jesus. And without Jesus, who is the very head of the body, uh, we can hardly claim to be the church. The Holy Spirit always leads us to Jesus. And finally, the Holy Spirit sanctifies. The Spirit helps the members of the church to be holy. And here we have to remember that God calls each and every one of us to be holy. That is our life's vocation, to become saints. And how do we do it? Not by our own strength, not as our own personal self-improvement project, but that's never going to work, but rather by turning more and more to God, relying on God's grace and on the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, it's interesting that the great prayer to the Holy Spirit, which most of us know, uh, really is a prayer of receptivity and welcome. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Now, the fire of your love, it is the perfection of charity, the love of God, and the love of neighbor, which is the very essence of holiness. Uh, earlier this week, we celebrated the feast of uh, St. Philip Neri, 
uh, the great Roman pastor and preacher and founder of the oratory. And one of the prayers from that feast day had this beautiful expression, Father, you continually raise up your faithful to the glory of holiness. In your love, kindle in us the fire of the Holy Spirit who so filled the heart of Philip Neri. Now, in our journey towards holiness, we, we look to models. We look to the example of the saints. And we ask that the, the fire of the Holy Spirit may burn in our hearts as brightly as it did in theirs. So the Holy Spirit sanctifies. And it's only with the Holy Spirit's help that we, with all our faults and all our sins, will make any progress in virtue and in holiness. Uh, so, friends, on this Pentecost Day, uh, let us pray that the effects of the Holy Spirit may be felt in the lives of each and every one of us, that the Spirit may build us up in faith and generous service, that he may animate us by leading us always to the Lord Jesus, and that he may sanctify us with the fire of his love. And in so doing, we know that the Spirit will continue to build up the church, to animate her, and to make her holy. Let us join together prayerfully in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the goodness and love of Almighty God, who is the source of every good and blessing, we offer our prayers for the church and the world. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, may God guide them with his wisdom and the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that they may be a sign of Christ's love and mercy in our world. Let us play, pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear God. our prayer. For leaders of nations, that the Holy Spirit gives them discerning hearts to know his will, to care for the people entrusted to their responsibility, and to faithfully follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world in these times of COVID-19, those who are experiencing illness, loss of loved ones and grief, financial struggles, and all those who are impacted by COVID-19 in any way. May they experience the love of our gracious God, who is with us now and always. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the troubled areas in our world, those whose struggles at this time are compounded by poverty, natural disasters and weather events, that God's grace and the Holy Spirit may descend upon them and strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those of us gathered here and via this broadcast, may the outpouring of the gifts of the Holy Spirit sanctify us and transform us for the good of the world let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, may they rejoice forever in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
God and Father of us all, listen to the prayers we have offered in faith, continue to pour out your spirit upon the church, and grant us all that is truly for our good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our hymn, Send Us Your Spirit. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of Pentecost, on which the Holy Spirit appeared to the apostles in tongues of fire, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given to us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel, angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar 
received the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, and place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and mar martyrs, but John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us who beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, but only, only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Friends, on this Pentecost Day, united in faith with the Church around the world, I invite you to join in the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing our communion hymn, Our Daily Bread. Spiritus mentes tuorum visita in place super navratia que tu creasti pectora idiceris paracletus altissimi and a lumen 
sensibus in fude amorem cordibus in firma nostri corporis virtute firma Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, I thank you for tuning in and participating prayerfully in this celebration of the Mass for the Feast of Pentecost. I wish you every blessing on this feast day and joy and well-being in the coming week. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Please bow your heads for the blessing. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same spirits. Amen. Amen. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. And may God who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please join in singing our concluding hymn, Come Holy Spirit. Yeah.